The song is found on page 13 in your programs. I don't possess houses or lands, fine clothes or jewelry. Sorrows and cares in this old world, my lot seems to be. But I have a Christ who paid the price way back on Calvary. And Christ is all, all and all this world to me. that trust in him. As chair of the Board of Regents for the Whalen Baptist Theological Seminary, I declare the 210th commencement open.
Good morning and blessings. I am Deacon Sylvester Stokes, a former two-time graduate of Whelan from the Diagonal Studies Program and acting president of the Alumni Association. Welcome to Whelan Baptist Theological Seminary's 210th commencement ceremony. It is with a great sense of pride that I am able to welcome you on behalf of the Honorable Board of Regents, our esteemed Board President, Dr. Pauline M. Moore, our Chancellor, Dr. John Harris, to our special guests, commencement speaker, the Reverend Gerard Phillips. Welcome you to this place of worship. We welcome you to this place of decoration and we welcome you to this place of celebration. To our in-person guests, our family members and friends, to our faculty and to our staff, welcome. To the alumni members, welcome home. Welcome back to Wayland. To our virtual members, we welcome you and we say thank you for joining us on this historic event. Now to the class of 2022. Now to the class of 2022. Welcome to your new chapter, your new chapter in ministry, your new chapter in teaching, your new chapter in leading, and most of all, your new chapter in spreading God's good news. Welcome. So now that we've welcomed all the heavenly and earthly folks, let's say welcome to the Holy Spirit in this place. May the Spirit of God rule and lead us through this ceremony. So an introduction to our commencement speaker. The Reverend Gerard Frank Phillips, Sr. is the senior pastor of the Greater True Vine Church in Port Arthur, Texas. Under the pastor Phillips' dynamic leadership, the congregation moved into their new facility. From an early age, God chose him to minister to others. Heeding the call to ministry, he was licensed to preach in 2003 under the pastor of his father, the late Reverend Frank Phillips, Jr. As a visionary leader, God has used Pastor Phillips to effect fresh energy, many trailblazing initiatives, and notable growth in his traditional church context. Reverend Phillips studied music at Lamar University and commercial music and studio engineering at Lamar State College in Port Arthur, Texas. He earned his undergraduate degree at the College of Biblical Studies in Houston, Texas. As a musician, Reverend Franklin began serving as percussionist at the age of two and playing the organ and keyboard by the age of 12. As a singer, his ministry through song in the choir as well as the local church. Reverend Phillips has used his life experiences to begin composing gospel music. He is currently working on his first project, Redeemed, which he plans to present in 2022. As a national recording artist, gospel recording artist, his acclaimed singles, Holy is Our God, I Made It Over, and Nobody But Jesus were performed and heard all over the country. Pastor Phyllis' music is heard on radio stations all across the United States and in the United Kingdom. He serves as one of the leading mentors in the Life Changers program at the Memorial High School where the mission is to change a negative past into a positive outcome. In his professional career, Reverend Phillips is employed by the Bob Hope Middle School as a behavioral specialist. Reverend Phillips is married to Mrs. Mindy Phillips, and they are the proud parents of three beautiful daughters, Haley Joy Phillips, Fallon McKenzie Phillips, and Christina Edwards Phillips and one son, Gerard Frank Phillips, Jr. Thank you.
holy and incredible God. You who are worthy of incredible praise. We are thankful for this day, another day that you have made. And yet on this journey called life, we can say we're glad to be in the number. Just one more time. Our souls are glad and we recognize that indeed you have made it possible for us to get to this moment. Gathered like those of old in that upper chamber, we wait for Pentecostal power. As we dawn the doors of the season of Pentecost, we ask that you would come and fill our hearts again. You faithful one, true of yesteryear, yes, the one who is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, who promised our ancestors that you would not leave them nor forsake them. We thank you. We gather in this sacred place called sanctuary to celebrate the milestones of ministry opportunities to those seeking to better serve Christ and his church. Those who have come and have prepared to serve this one holy baptistic and apostolic faith. We have come today over a way that has been watered with tears through the blood of the slaughter, through the fire, the flood, the blood and the mud. But all of that just to say thank you for waking us up this morning and thank you for starting us on our way. Even when the thoughts of giving up galvanized the glory prepared for those who continued. Even when we felt like we couldn't make it through that last exam. When we couldn't pass and write that last paper. You pushed us along the way. We thank you for preparing this place for us called Wayland Baptist Theological Seminary which lifted the Negro, the colored, the black, the African American out of the gloomy past. Thank you for making a way when there was no way. Thank you for preparing a place to educate black people in a time that educational inequality was the thing to do. And God, we invoke your presence today in this 210th commencement as we are blessed by the legacies of those who have prepared before us whose labors are not in vain be pleased with what we say and do today that the words of our mouths the meditations of our hearts be acceptable always in your sight that your will would be done on earth as it is in heaven we pray in the name, the only name that matters, in the name of Jesus, our Christ, our Redeemer, our Lord, our Liberator, our Healer, our Sanctifier, our Baptizer with the Holy Spirit, and our soon coming King, Ashe, Ashe, and Amen. Our worship continues with our scripture readings to which after we hear the first reading by Dr. Joyce Green Miles, the Psalter by Dr. Terry L. Champion, and the second reading, I'm sorry, by Reverend Dr. C. Diane Mosby, we will rise for the gradual and then the gospel will be read. Please remain standing for the gospel and the doxology. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Hear the words of the Mosaic writer. Be strong and bold. Have no fear or dread of them. Because it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. The word of the Lord. The 
the readings continue on page 14. Please follow. Psalm 121 from the Hebrew Psalter. I lift up my eyes to the hills from where will my help come? He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. Blessed are the words of this ancient hymn. Hear the words of Dr. Luke. While they were eating together, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised. He said, this is what you heard from me. John baptized with water, but only in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. As a result, those who gathered together asked Jesus, Lord, are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel now? Jesus replied, it isn't for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has set by his own authority. Rather, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. The word of the Lord. Page 15 in your program. Thou, O Christ, my Lord and King, grant in thine own name my plea. Take the sacrifice I bring. Be thou all thou art in me.
a reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord according to John. Hear the words of the Gospel. Mary Magdalene left and announced to the disciples, I've seen the Lord. Then she told them what he said to her. It was still the first day of the week, that evening while the disciples were behind closed doors because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them. He said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you don't forgive them, they aren't forgiven. This is the gospel news of the gospel. Be Christ. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Amen. God is worthy to be praised. Let us turn to our litany at this time. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. Our ancestors fought for the right to receive a quality education. Many sacrifices have been managed through blood, turmoil, tragedy, trepidation, and the tyranny of segregation. Yet, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Give us wisdom, O God. Our ancestors' wisdom was like Sophia. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her task. She sees that her trading is profitable, and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds a distaff, and grasp the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. Encourage others to benefit from the rigorous work of higher education. Study to show yourself approved to God. A student that will not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth.
We thank you, God, for Wayland Baptist Theological Seminary, a place, somebody's going to agree, of rigorous academics, a place of black girl magic, a place of black boy joy, and a place of black theological excellence. Altogether, we praise you, O oh God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Ashe and amen. Amen. Page 18. If when you give the best of your service, telling the world that the Savior is come, be not dismayed when they don't believe you. He'll understand and say, well done. Oh, when I come to the end of my journey, today that he'll understand and say well done that you've come through the fire the flood the blood and the mud just to get here today does anybody have a praise that they need to get out right quick come on I'll give you 60 seconds to praise the Lord like you lost your mind up in here raise the roof in this place and let's give God a crazy You better get it right now. 
Some of you regions, you got a praise that you got to get out. Some of you in the audience, you have a praise that you need to get out. Go on and take another few seconds and get it out. a time in the Hebrew scriptures that there was a certain official in his dignified garments but he recovered something he discovered something he received something back and he said I'll become even more undignified than this is there anybody here with an undignified praise anybody want to give Y'all sit down. Come on, take your seat, because you're on camera. You're live all over, and we're at a commencement, and y'all acting up. So we just got to sit down for just a moment so I can do the chancellor greetings. But somebody knows that if it had not been for the Lord on your side, you would have hurt somebody. If it had not been for the Lord on your side, you know exactly where you would be. But when you think about the goodness of Jesus and all for you. Your soul cries out hallelujah and you thank God. When you think about it, you'll start thanking him. Sit down. Jesus Christ, those are my greetings. Just give them praise. And he shall reign forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> it got too good to even remember what you tried to do. <laughs> I'm here again. 
appealing again for our Wayland Baptist Theological Seminary. COVID-19 is still here. And so are our convictions. In the reality of an unjust invasion, the Holy Spirit is still inspiring students to study, showing themselves approved. Wayland has supported refugees from Haiti, the continent of Africa, Afghanistan, and Ukraine, Ukraine. You know that Wayland prides itself in the preparation of persons to go to the world, not just preaching, teaching, and baptizing, but also building, budding, and, uh, and aiding in humanitarian and medical mission of efforts. I mean, when we think about the in influence of black Baptist men and women who did not limit the good news of the gospel to simply preaching, but a radical lived faith. Take, for instance, the Reverend George Lyles, the first Negro global service apostle to travel and establish a missionary ministry on foreign soil, or the Reverend Hagar Simpson, writer of the 1792 Baptist Church Covenant and part of George Lyle's mission team and in early Baptist women licensed to preach. Then there was Lot Carey, the physician, politician, and a lay preacher. Dr. Virginia <coughs> Broughton E. Walker, educator and one of the first National Baptist Convention women missionaries. Dr. Nanny Helen, Helen Barrows, Samuel Sharp, and a host of others who have shown us the way. Through their unselfish contributions, compromising faith in Christ and Jesus, their unapologetic blackness, and their unwavering commitment to the Baptist faith, here we stand. Your special gift today, in any amount, will help Whalen live out its mission of preparing God-called men and women for specialized ministries and vocations in the church, the academy, and the world. You can give electronically through Givelify or PayPal or through check, cash, or money order. So send I you for Christ for Christ, the church, for wailing. Thank you. Praise the Lord. We thank Dr. Prudence Harvey for blessing us with that wonderful chronicling of outstanding leadership, persons who have been in the vanguard of propelling the kingdom of God. And we recognize that leadership is invaluable to anything worthwhile that God accomplishes on earth. We're grateful for this school cultivating, developing, and producing leaders for the local church, for the global church, for the academy, for the marketplace, and we thank the Lord for those who are being celebrated today. Among the leaders who are in our space that we share space with today is the head, the person who sits at the head of the Board of Regents, and on behalf of the Board of Regents and on behalf of the Whalen family, it's our delight to acknowledge her, the venerable Dr. Pauline M. Moore. We praise God for, for you. 
Hallelujah. We thank the Lord that you serve this ministry, this institution, so faithfully and so freely and so fully in how we benefit as regents, how we benefit as students, how we benefit as faculty and those who are friends of the school. We all benefit from the quality of leadership that you provide. And that is provided despite the fact that you continue to serve in other areas of leadership throughout our nation and internationally, ministering to women, ministering to, to ministers' wives and widows locally and around the world. And how you stand by your husband at the 10th Baptist Church and continue to serve that ministry with your husband, Dr. William Moore. So we wanted to recognize you, and while we cannot pay you for the service that you offer, we wanted to say to you, thank you. And so we pray that you'll be blessed by these gifts that will be provided for you today as we've been blessed by the gift of your leadership, the gift of your life, your example for all of us. Can you join me in celebrating the venerable Pauline, Dr. Pauline Moore. Your Beatitudes, Sire Chancellor, it is with gratitude, fondness, and great joy that I present to you the candidate for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Religion, Jura Dignitatis, Gerard Frank Phillips, Sr., in recognition of his exceptional work to the church as pastor, preacher, prophet, singer, musician, and visionary leader. In granting a degree, Jura Dignitatis, this institution, and particularly its honorable and most revered Board of Regents, gives praises to God for the recipient and their gifts, as well as their graces bestowed by the Almighty. And it recognizes the faithfulness, contribution, and work ethic uh, in a specific field or practice. By conferring this degree today upon our commencement speaker, Waylon says that we affirm black boy joy amen somebody now y'all get happy when we say black girl magic now black boy joy <laughs> by virtue of the authority vested in me by the state of florida and the commonwealth of virginia with the authority of the board of regents of wayland baptist theological seminary i hereby confer upon you the degree doctor of philosophy in religion, jury dignitatis, in witness thereof, we now award you the diploma. Would you come forward to kneel? That's going to take one second. The hood is in the room. Hmm? 
while we're waiting for that hood. We'll ask that uh, Dr. Betty Anderson makes her way around so that she can be next. And while we're waiting, oh, there it is. In granting a juris dignitatis, we now present the Doctor of Jury Dignitatis. I'm sorry, the Doctor of Sciences Jury Dignitatis, to Betty A. Anderson in recognition of her exceptional work as an educator. Now, she doesn't mind me telling this, but she's 78 years old and she still teaches sixth grade science. <laughs> if you all saw her over there, <laughs> she has, her bio is here, we won't read it, but at 78 years old, she's still teaching. After retiring as a nurse for over 30 years, she started teaching middle school students in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'll read this last portion of her bio. One would presume that professionalism and service is the trademark of your life. In recognition of your extraordinary examples as nurse, educator, science teacher, and mentor throughout a career dedicated to advancing knowledge and services to others, the regents of Wayland Baptist Theological Seminary are honored and pleased to confer upon you, Betty A. Anderson, the degree Doctor of Sciences, Jure Dignitatis, and you better not cry. <laughs> In granting a Juris Dignitatis degree, this institution, and particularly its honorable and most revered Board of Regents, gives praises to God for the recipient and gifts and graces God has bestowed upon her, and it recognizes the faithfulness, contribution, and work ethic in a specific field or practice. At this time, Allison and Shade is coming to introduce the presenter of our book awards. Okay, good afternoon, let's see. The Black Theological Book Society is a national interdenominational, interdisciplinary theological book society in the black church tradition. Founded in 2008 as the African American Theological Book and Literature Association, BTBS, was created 
to recognize the scholarship of th black theological and religious studies scholars, authors, writers, and rhetoricians across disciplines. From its inception in 2008, Black Theological Book Society has awarded books to seminarians to further promote life learning. Presenting this year's Black Theological Book Society Awards is PhD student in African American preaching and sacred rhetoric at Christian Theological Seminary, executive pastor of membership care at historic Greater Travelers Breast Baptist Church, the House of Hope, Atlanta. Author of 31 Days of Winning, founder and CEO, Jennifer Carner, Inc., Jennifer Carner Ministries, and Winning Women Initiative. Faculty lecturer of rhetoric and theolo theology and member of the board of directors for the Black Theological Book Society, the Reverend Jennifer L. Carner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Church Covenant of 1792, written by Hagar Simpson and George Lyle, exalts us to study diligently the word of God, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be kind and just to all those in our employ. God's words are powerful. Within the field of African-American rhetoric, the concept of NAMO holds great significance, for it is the African belief in the persuasive, mystical, transformative, even life-giving power of words. So today, on behalf of the Black Theological Book Society, I will, be I will be presenting God's holy word to our distinguished graduates. To God be all the glory for the great things that God has done, and congratulations to you all. Would the uh, 2020 graduates come first to receive the Holy Scriptures? That's y'all. Will the jury dignitatis conferrals please come? Both Dr. Anderson and Dr. Phillips. And she stepped out a moment. And then our two, oh, here she comes. And then we have two the, that they'll be presented their hoods later in the program, but uh, Dr. McCray and then Dr. James Anderson. Dr. McCray. At this time, let us welcome the Reverend Dr. Phillips with our commencement 
homily. Let us stand as we are able and give him a thunderous Waylon welcome. God's people say amen. 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 Come on, you can do better than that. Say amen. amen. I'm happy to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Again, thank you to this, this great institution. Y'all don't know how y'all had me teary-eyed and crying, but happy um, all at the same time. I'm also grateful. Um, tech, forgive me because I know y'all probably was saying Pastor was on his phone the whole time. My family is watching online and they saying congratulations. Were they crying, sending emojis and all that good kind of stuff? So I just bless the name of the Lord and to the angel of this house. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, to the president, to all of the dignitaries, thank you so much. To um, Ms. Williams, the, the, to the um, the evangelist and the speaker from earlier that made it so hard for Pastor Phillips on today. Can we give her one? Come on. Come on, y'all could do better than that. Uh, I'm, I'm going to make it I'm going to make it m my personal business to make sure she gets to Port Arthur, Texas. Amen. 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 Um, there's a word from God on today. Um, again, matter of fact, before I even move um, to my good friend, Dr. John, uh, man, thank you so much for the hospitality and the invitation. Uh, we thank God for you. Um, just do me one quick favor before we go into the word of prayer. Can somebody just lift up your right hand for me and just move like this back and forth? Okay, that way when we leave here, you will, won't be able to lie and say that the preacher didn't move you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And we bless God on today. Lord, it's me again, your humble servant coming to you, humbly as I can. Hide me behind the cross, God, and have thine own way. Open up my mouth, Father God, and give me the words that you would have for me to say. Father, this is my spirit and plea, spirit of the living God. Fall fresh upon me. We hope that the congregation will never be impressed by Jared, but only impressed by your holy and compromising gospel. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Let us all say amen. 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 I want to say congratulations to all of the graduates and definitely speak from a brief um, brief word. I have my stopwatch, so I want to make sure that I'm timely. Um, if you have your word, um, we're going to come from Philippians 1. Philippians 1. Philippians 1, verse 6. Philippians 1, verse 6. And it reads like this. Being confident of this very thing, that he which had begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Just for a brief moment, I want to speak to you. He's not done just yet. He's not done just yet. Um, um, I want to attest to you on this morning, on this afternoon, rather, life has a way of taking you through some things. Life brings joy, but can also bring pain. Life will make you cry and sometimes it will have you to develop heartache because if we are honest and we can be honest on this afternoon that there are moments where life becomes uncomfortable as a matter of fact I'm, I'm sure if 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 we just take a trip down memory lane we can testify everything we had to go through hasn't been always easy 
And I know for many of us, uh, many can say, well, Pastor Phillips, that doesn't result to me. That doesn't come to me. Um, I've always had great days. I've always, I've never had sleepless nights. I've never had to endure no type of bad moments. As a matter of fact, Pastor, my halo is already here. I already have uh, my wings already have been purchased in heaven. My, 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 my building in heaven has already been taken care of because I'm so holy and I have everything all together. Nothing is wrong. But for the rest of us in the house, we can testify that life has a way of taking us through certain things. Life has a way of making us go through some moments. And because life has brought us through certain moments, we can testify on the day like today. God has been so good. As a matter of fact, not only has he been good, but for the rest of us, we can hang our honorary doctorate degree where we major on life struggles and testify. It took some work for us to get where we are. It took work for us to be where we are right now. It didn't start out always on the upside, but it always was a journey. And throughout this journey, we've been enduring some hard times, but the only reason why we have made it thus far is because God is not done with us just yet. I wish I had a one the few believers in the house that'll just say that's where I can just hang my shout at the, to say even though I've been through the storm, even though I've been through the rain, even though I've had some hardships and hangups, the only way and reason why I'm here right now is because God is not through with me just yet. He, he's He's not through. He's not through. And, and watch the text. This is uh, the second characteristics um, of Paul's thanksgiving for, as we know, what, what, what was shown uh, to the Philippian believers was that he prayed with confidence. Let the house say he prayed with confidence. He prayed with confidence. He, he, he prayed with confidence. And when we understand that he prayed with confidence, the one thing you need to understand and know that confidence is what gets you through. Confidence is how you make it out. Confidence is how you get to where you need to be. Because watch it in the text. He shows us that where we're going is only because of the confidence that God puts in us. Um, that confidence was based on the working of God in the midst not in his own ability or persuasiveness but in God's ability to put something greater in him I like it listen church two matters emerge as significant emphasis on the nature of the work in the Philippians and the time orientation involved God began the work in the church and obviously if he starts something it will reach its completion y'all didn't shout Paul easily moved between the tension of human agency and divine um, initiative, accepting both in natural way. Here it is. Look at what we see, what Paul does. The Philippians had partnership with Paul, but God actually worked in them. But notice contrast with the contrast between these two re um, realities and Paul comfort with each other and each one of them was deserving of all God's attention. Because watch it, Paul is writing this letter from Philippi into the Philippi in the uneasy state and as a matter of fact we know this because not only is he writing to the church that he has found it in difficult times but remember child of God it's this difficult time because right now he's currently in jail he's bound in shackles but but here's your shout don't miss it although he's in shackles he manages to stay He'll stay on assignment uh, while yet being uncomfortable. Uh, he's still on. Am I talking to some graduates in the house uh, that can testify and say, uh, I'm on my way through my studies, on my way through my reading, on my way of going through what I have to go through. Uh, I've had to go through so much, uh, but here's the good news. Uh, I stayed on assignment. Uh, oh, look at God. Uh, and that's the reason uh, why we are where we are right now. Uh, because God placed something so good in us uh, that we're able to stay on task but the question comes the question comes how 
how are you able to stay on task and, and um, when 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 you're when you're uncomfortable how am i able to stay comfortable and when god is stretching me beyond my limits uh, let me tell you what he tells you to do i'm only six minutes in on the stopwatch let me tell you what it says it says number one what you need to understand how to do you need to understand first uh, how to be confident Y'all hear what I say? Uh, you need to learn how to be confident. The first part of the text says, uh, being confident of this very thing. Uh, confident means feeling or showing confidence in oneself uh, or being self-assured. In other words, uh, when you have confidence in God, uh, you have the assurance uh, that wherever you are or uh, whatever you're going through, uh, God is capable uh, to bring you. I wish I had uh, some of the witnesses uh, that can sing that old song like my granny used to sing. Uh, Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I'm an heir of our salvation. Maybe this can be your shout. This is my story. This is my song. And because God has blessed me, I'm praising my Savior. All, all the day long. I know, I know for many of us, uh, um, confident means what it means. Uh, and I know the enemy has uh, you thinking it's not going to work out after you've seen what you've seen, after you've noticed your current circumstances, that the end result won't work out for your favor, that the odds are against you, uh, that you're not going to be able to win. But child of God, in order to win, hear me, uh, in order to win, uh, you have to be willing to be confident. Look, uh, and I know uh, what you're saying pastor how can I be confident in times like these and you're telling me to be confident but wait God how can I be confident after I go through and I've watched time after time as unarmed black men still getting killed by police officer how can I be confident when the same fight that Dr. King was fighting over 50 years ago we're still fighting right now how can I be confident after the times that when I'm going through I'm living in Texas and just a couple of hours away, we have people going in school, killing our children. How can we be confident when we look around the world and we see people going into the hospital where people are sick and we're still watching people kill folk for no reason? How can I be confident after I come to church after a long pandemic and folks say that they praise God, but now they don't understand the difference of giving God praise or sitting in the church? How can I be confident tuned into online ministry but nobody wants to clap their hands nobody wants to shout for joy and I don't know maybe maybe just maybe that's the reason why the church has turned into where it is right now it's not because God has lost confidence in us but we've turned to lose confidence in God and maybe just maybe child of God that's the reason why the church ministry can't grow maybe the reason why ministries can't grow is because we can't reach folk on the outside because we have no confidence on the inside maybe the reason why Christians have so many issues is because we don't have God in us but we have what we call a cotton candy substance which means we're all sweet and no substance well maybe the reason why we don't have confidence is because everything in the church we get shouted because people are joining but we don't know the difference in between church swelling and church growth you gotta understand what it means to be confident in God because when you're confident in God, when you're confident in God, God has a way. I'm not letting you get big headed just because you got the degree. God has a way. I'm not letting you get the big head just because somebody didn't join your church. Let me tell you, child of God, don't let your confidence of where you are right now for what you've done let you miss your anointing, more anointing of where God is taking you. Don't you lose your fire. Don't you lose your anointing. You stand flat-footed, ten toes down, and say, for God I live and for God I die. I got to first be confident. I got to first be confident. I got to cut across the field. I got to first be confident. But you know, and the only reason you can be confident is because you got to understand, uh, um, number one, uh, uh, you got to understand um, 1 John 5 and 14 says, the, um, this is the confidence we have in approaching God, uh, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Ephesians uh, 3 and 12 says, in him uh, and through faith, uh, in him we may approach God uh, with freedom and confidence. Jeremiah 17 and 7 says, uh, but blessed is the one who trusts 
trust in the Lord whose confidence is in him. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, just be confident. But after you be confident, um, second thing you got to understand, he'll get you started. Uh, how do you know he'll get started? Look at what the text says. It says that he which had begun a good work, a good work in you. Know this child of God when, know the church when, whenever God starts something, it's always a good work. <laughs> Whenever God starts something in your life, whenever God does something with you, it's always a good work. That's why you can't worry about who's saying what they say about you or what they say to you or how they're looking at your past. It does not matter what you know about me. All that matters is that God is doing something in me. Greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world. I wish I had about 20 folk in a house and I make 21 that I say, I thank God for the good work of the Lord. He, he, he's, 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 he's good work. He's no, he's good work. Remember this, friends. God will not allow anything to come in your life that he doesn't already know what the ending outcome will be. The good work refers to God's salvation and continued perfection and perfecting of the believers. Watch the text, child of God. This confidence operated in the apostle Paul. Notice it did not prevent him from praying for his converts or exhorting them to the use of his means for their um, continuance in grace. But hear me, church. We ought to be careful not to abuse our assurance. Whenever one loses confidence, we tend to stop working. You know how, I, I know many of us are in ministry, many of us are pastors, but let me tell you, most of the time, when God don't show up the way we want him to, we stop coming to church. We stop showing up for Bible study. Uh, uh, if we if we associates we get the big head because of the fact we don't get to preach like everybody else uh, so now we get upset and we want to join that church hop and go to somewhere else uh, and now we get upset and what God says don't you get fickle in that type of way because despite how I messed up despite how jacked up you are God is still working on you for you to be able to have that testimony that God is placing something in you you cannot do what you do if you are where you are if God something in you. You can't allow your past to hunt you. Why can I allow my past to hunt me? Because the Bible says, ah, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away and all things are made new. Do I have any witnesses testifying? The reason why I am where I am is because I put some stuff on them. I gotta move. Here, here it is. Um, if God... It's going to make sure your confidence is high. He'll get you started. Why will God get you started? I tell you, um, the only way God gets you started, you got to understand, he'll never leave you. Not willing to forsake you. How do you know he'll get you started and he won't stop? Because the Bible says he already knows the plans that he has for you. He already knows the hair and the grains on your head. He already knows everything about you. Matter of fact, the word even says now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Matter of fact, God is so good that even though I mess up and fail, he'll be there to step right in and prevent me from falling back into the same. Do I have some witnesses that can say that's why I can put my hands in the air and shout right now because I'm confident but he got me started and I'm ready to keep on marching. I got to move. I got to quit. Uh, um, um, here it is. Uh, um, look at what he says. He says, first of all, first of all, in order for you to understand that he'll take care of this, um, you'll never be under understand how God can get you started if you're never willing to wait on God. Um, yeah. Am I making any sense on today? Uh, you, you'll never be able to get started if you're not looking how to wait on God. That reminds me of my son. Uh, me and my son was at Wendy's the other day. I know y'all eat steaks and shrimp and y'all eat all of these good lobsters oh, oh, out here in Maryland. But in the city country, um, we, we call it Port Arthur, Texas. We go to spots like Wednesday to go get lunch. My, my brother, uh, my, my, my son is four years old, but I swear he's the chicken nugget guru. He's the chicken nugget hero. Um, you would think a four-year-old would eat a four-piece, six-piece. No, he eat a ten-piece meal, extra fries, a large drink. He, 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 he's small, but he's big and 
appetite that and one particular day I ordered I'm real finicky when it comes to my food I, I ordered me I, I, I'm lactose so I went to the counter and, and, and I asked him uh, no I was in the car and I asked him I on the drive through I said listen I want uh, number 10 I give me um the, 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 the chicken nugget meal um, and let me get a lemonade for my son I said but he said would you like anywhere else I took a breath because you know people at fast food will mess up your meal I, I, I took a breath and I said let me get a, a, a bacon burger no cheese i um, light on the mustard uh, and then let me get little pickles uh, put a little tomatoes no onions please uh, and then uh, I asked for um, fries and I said but please uh, give me some sweet sauce so they went through the whole thing again uh, when I got to the counter paid my money uh, I paid my money and then she told me to move forward up front and wait uh, I didn't like that I didn't like that because uh, I gave you my time I gave you my money I gave you what I want when I gave you my money uh, I started to say I, I knew that was my moment to say that I needed my food right then I've already worked hard that's how you felt at the beginning didn't you you turned in your assignment you turned in your final exams you did what you did so since you did it why should I have to wait a whole month for the commencement ceremony just give me my degree right now and let me go on home I get to the front the person comes out they hand me my food I said ma'am you gotta answer me and maybe it is my arrogance of being a pastor because you know how pastors get we want our food first we want our food hot we want as a bigger portion we want this type of stuff and I asked her why in the world did it take so long for my food to come out? Two or three cars have already left after I made my order. Don't miss it. She said, Pastor, the reason why your food took so long is because you requested a special order. And special orders take time. Y'all missed your shout. That's the reason why it took so long. That's the reason why you had to go through the storm. Because it was a special order. And the Lord told me to tell you, he's giving you something with a special order. But your special order will take some time. So after you're confident, he'll get you started. Well, here's your shot, and I'm done. I'm, only, uh, I'm at 15 minutes. He said, I said, 22. Here it is. Here it is. Look what he says. The Lord will provide. <laughs> How do you know? Uh, um, I've said, I told you, you got to be confident, and then he'll get you started. Then the Lord will provide. How do you know? Listen to what the text says. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work. <laughs> A good work in you will. Yeah, and shout on the wheel. Will will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. It, in other words, it will perform until Jesus comes. Paul was sure that what God had begun um, and would continue to be its completion. The word began uh, in the Greek it literally means to originate. It refers to the time of re 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 um, to, uh, time to start and to begin. To root this word begin. It means to primarily indicate uh, what of its worth. God is working on that which is in us. Notice this is why he does his is work on the soul when a person starts a task and does not finish it it is usually because he or she lacks the power or skill or material but hear me child but this is not the true will of God there is never a need to worry about the, the all-powerful all-knowing God on running into difficulties he cannot handle in completing what he has already started I'm a witness this morning he always completes his mission I'm a witness. He always takes care of what he needs to take care of. This text should remind us that God takes care of his responsibility for the work from beginning all the way to the end. And since he is going to receive us to his help, he first perhaps and prepares us for the reception of church. Let me tell you and let me help you understand that here in the text, despite any persecution, the church in Philippi might face her. Paul was confident that God would continue his good work in them and that's why I stopped by to help somebody this morning and understand that you're not finished just yet and you're not finished until God said it's over. You better understand that the completion of your journey is only over when God says it is over. Do I have some witnesses in the house that can just testify and say that's why I can make it now because I understand God has something better for me. He has something in store for me. And since he has something in store for me, I have no choice but to give him glory. Because God is not done just 
Yeah, I, I'm done. Uh, I'm, I'm done. I got to go. Uh, I'm, I'm here. Look at what the text says. He says he will give me confidence, but he'll provide. But you never will be able to provide when you forget where you come from. Okay. 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 You miss your biggest testimony. I'm done. Let me close this Bible. Uh, um, um, you miss your biggest testimony because you forget where you come from. I know you eat at the steakhouses now. I know you eat brunch. I know you got your chicken and waffles, but the reason why we can't shout about how far God has brought, brought far God has brought us, because you forget about the time when you didn't have dual air conditions. But all you had was a box fan. You, I, I, know, I know I'm not talking to nobody. Uh, uh, you forget when, 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 those times when you had the heater that you had to stand in front of. You forget about the time. I know you're having your French toast, but you forget about the times when your mother would fix you toast. And then you would tell her, she would tell you, put the toast and fix you something to eat. And then you would say, but mama, we don't have no toast. I know you're used to your toasters and ovens, uh, but we didn't do that. Mama would say, put the toast bread in the oven, uh, not the middle, uh, but put it at the bottom. Uh, and when you put it at the bottom, uh, I would put it in. And then after I would take it out the bottom, uh, I would say, mama, the, the toaster is burnt. Uh, daddy, I'm going to have to make me some new ones. Uh, daddy said, no, you ain't. Uh, we don't waste food around. Around him, the daddy say, Take that dirt, that bread, the, get you a butter knife, uh, and start to <laughs> scrape that stuff off. The, but daddy, we ain't got no cinnamon sugar, the, that's all right. Uh, get you some butter, the, spread it on the bread, the, grab you some sugar, and just sprinkle. You see, you can't shout about the delicacy of life uh, if you never shout uh, about where you come from. That reminds me. Oh, I'm getting emotional. I gotta stop. Uh, I'm, I'm, that reminds me of my daddy. I started pastoring in 2014. My daddy died with cancer um, um, about, two, about two months before I became pastor. Yeah, yeah. The only time he was able to see me in my ordination service was from a hospital bed, giving me the thumbs up through a phone. Daddy told me, son, you're going to be a better preacher than me. You're going to go all over the world. You're going to preach the gospel. You're going to preach it all the stages you're gonna preach at all the convention I, and, and believe you me everything that he said came to pass uh, but the one thing that daddy reminded me of uh, he made me remember because I was a track star a track athlete when I was in high school to college and I ran the quarter I ran the four by one I ran the quarter my fastest time in the 400 was a 46 2 and and I was running and I ran real fast and, and until I got injured and my daddy one particular day while I was at home daddy used to always say dad Jared where's your medals because I had my medals and my ribbons uh, from the summer all the way to all the way to the end on my wall he said son that's a lot of medals he always took pride in the tell his son he was proud of him because of what he did and my daddy looked at me he's looked and he said look son I see all your medals but what's the medals on the floor I said daddy those medals and ribbons don't count to me he said why he said because I represent the blue red and the gold because that's, that shows first, second, and third. I don't really look at the orange and green and, and the other colors because that means uh, I didn't win. That means fourth place, fifth place, sixth place, seventh place. So I don't count those on the floor. I just put them in the box. My daddy started to take tape uh, and he was walking while he was on his walk and he took the tape and started to place uh, all of my all of my old medals, all of my, 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 my old ribbons on the walk. Uh, I said, Daddy, what you doing? It makes no sense. He said, Son, uh, what you're missing is you want to shout about what you did on the forefront uh, to make it look so good uh, but you never forget about the time uh, or when you went down the street uh, and you had to go through some stuff uh, because that only shows you uh, that you made it where you are uh, on uh, and he said whatever you go through uh, never be afraid uh, to put something else on the walk uh, last August uh, my daddy wasn't able to see it uh, he wasn't able to be here he wasn't able to see me on cross the stage uh, with my first degree uh, and on January January, I'm going to graduate with another one. Daddy, I just want to tell you, even on a day like today, I got something else that I can put on my walk. I got something else after I know what I had to go through. All the tears that I had to shed, all the times of broken promises, all the sleepless nights, I got something else that I can put on my walk. Do I have any witnesses here that can, by the sound of my weak voice, that can just say, I got something that I can put on my walk. In other words, be not dismayed. I got to get out of here. Whatever be tied to God, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings a love abide. He will.
page 19 in your program. Go and live my gospel fully. Everything that I have done. Preaching only the full gospel. Spirit formed and overflow. For a glorious church. Woke, whole, and working. Following our exalted head. For a glorious church. Woke, whole, and working. For Christ, for the church, Wayland. Doing what our Lord commands us. Empowered by the great I am. Faithful to the call of Jesus. Pro Christi, pro Ecclesia. For a glorious church. Woke, whole, and working. Following our exalted head. For a glorious church. Woke, whole, and working. For Christ, for the church, Wayland. Go. like that song for Christ for the church Wayland if I could have a program booklet Well, the candidates for the Doctor of Humane Letters and the Doctor of Pastoral Ministry, Honoris Calza, come forward. And could you bring him with you, Deacon, uh, Dr. Anderson, with you? And we will do a 
accommodations for uh, Dr. James Anderson. And you can just push him here. And I'm going to go over here. Can I get a word? In recognition of your extraordinary examples as churchman, deacon, and veteran, and service to others, the regents of Wayland will bestow upon you James L. Anderson, the Doctor of Humane Letters. In granting an honorary degree, this institution and particularly its honorable and most revered Board of Regents gives praises to God for the recipient and the gifts and graces God has bestowed upon him. And it recognizes the faithfulness, contribution, and work ethic in a specific field or practice. By virtue and authority vested in me by the state of Florida and the Commonwealth of Virginia with the authority of the Board of Regents of Wayland Baptist Theological Seminary, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa, in witness thereof, we now award you this hood and diploma. For your devotion to pastoral ministry and the church, for your tireless efforts to bring glory to God through your gifts and abilities, the regents will now, in a moment, confer upon you Larry Philip McRae, yeah. the doctor of pastoral ministry, honoris causa. Amen. In granting an honorary degree, this institution, and particularly its honorable and most revered Board of Regents, gives praises to God for the recipient and the gifts and graces God has bestowed upon him. And it recognizes the faithfulness, contribution, and work ethic in a specific field or practice. By, the vir by virtue of the authority vested in me by the state of Florida and the Commonwealth of Virginia, with the authority of the Board of Regents of Wayland Baptist Theological Seminary, I hereby confer upon you the degree Doctor of Pastoral Ministry, honoris causa, in witness whereof we award you now this hood and diploma. Let us give them another hand. We will now present our candidates for academic degrees. Will the candidate for graduation with the Master of Divinity degree and the Graduate Certificate in Pastoral Care please stand? So we're going to need the graduates to transition because you're going to come up that way.
that again. Will the candidate for graduation with the Master of Divinity degree and the graduate certificate in pastoral care please come forward? Reverend Dean, on behalf of the faculty, I am pleased to certify that this graduand has met the necessary prerequisites, has completed the required work for Wayland Baptist Theological Seminary, and is a candidate for the Master of Divinity degree and the graduate certificate in pastoral ministry. Receiving the Master of Divinity with a concentration in chaplaincy and pastoral care, Sharon R. Wells, magna cum laude. <laughs> Receiving the, the graduate certificate in pastoral care, Sharon R. Wells, seminary honors. As the Dean of Wayland Baptist Theological Seminary, with the authority invested in me by the Board of Regents, on behalf of the faculty and in accordance with the laws of the State of Florida and the Commonwealth of Virginia, I hereby confer upon this candidate the Master of Divinity degree with all the rights, the honors, and privileges pertaining thereto, as well as the graduate certificate therein in pastoral care. Will the candidate for graduation with the Master of Sacred Music and Master of Theological Studies please come forward? Reverend Dean, on behalf of the faculty, I'm pleased to certify that this graduate has met the necessary prerequisites and has completed the required work at Wayland Baptist Theological Seminary and is a candidate for the Master of Sacred Music and Master of Theological Studies. Receiving the Master of Sacred Music, Sarah Lynette Blanford, magna cum laude. <laughs> Receiving the Master of Theological Studies, Sarah Lynette Blanford, magna cum laude. As the Dean of Wayland Baptist Theological Seminary, with the authority invested in me by the Board of Regents, on behalf of the faculty and in accordance with the laws of the State of Florida and the Commonwealth of Virginia, I hereby confer upon this candidate the Master of Sacred Music and Master of Sacred Theological Studies with all rights, the honors, and the privileges pertaining thereto. Will the certificate for graduation with the certificate in biblical and theological studies please come forward? Reverend Dean, on behalf of the faculty, I am pleased to certify that this graduate has met the requisite uh, course requirements and completed everything he needed to do for Wayland Baptist Theological Seminary and is a candidate for the Certificate in Biblical and Theological Studies. Receiving the Certificate in Biblical and Theological Studies, Nafis G. Singleton, Dean Distinction. As the Dean of Wayland Baptist Theological Seminary with the authority invested in me by the Board of Regents on behalf of the faculty and in accordance with the laws of the state of Florida and the Commonwealth of Virginia, I hereby confer upon this candidate the Certificate in Biblical and Theological Studies with all of the rights, the honors, and privileges pertaining thereto. Will the candidate for graduation with the Masters of Business Administration please come forward? Reverend Chance, Reverend Dean, on behalf of the faculty, I am pleased to certify that this graduate has met the necessary requisites and has completed the required coursework at Wayland Baptist Theological Seminary and is a candidate for the Master of Business Administration. Receiving the Masters of Business Administration, Eliana N. Bullock, summa cum laude.
As Chancellor of Wayland Baptist Theological Seminary with the authority invested in me by the Board of Regents, the faculty, and in accordance with the laws of the state of Florida, the Commonwealth of Virginia, I hereby confer upon this candidate the Master of Business Administration with all the rights, honors, and privileges pertaining thereto. Receiving the Masters of Business Administration, Eliana N. Bullock, her capstone project is effectively acquiring clinical practices utilizing a standard format of due diligence to ensure the realization and anticipated ROI, or return on investment. Will the candidate for the graduate for graduation with the Bachelor of Science in Business Administration please come forward? Reverend Dean, on behalf of the faculty, I am pleased to certify that this graduate from the undergraduate division has completed the necessary requisites and is now ready for graduation with the Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. Receiving the Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, Demarcus Lamar Bethay, summa cum laude. As the Dean of Wayland Baptist Theological Seminary, with the authority invested in me by the Board of Regents, on behalf of the faculty and in accordance with the law of the state of Florida and the Commonwealth of Virginia, I hereby confer upon this candidate the Bachelor of Art in excuse me, in Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, I, with all of the rights, the honors, and privileges pertaining thereto. Will the candidate for graduation for the Bachelor of Arts in Classical Education please come forward? Reverend Dean, on behalf of the faculty, I am pleased to certify that this graduate from the undergraduate division has met the requisite courses and is now ready for graduation with the Bachelor of Arts in Classical Education. Receiving the Bachelor of Arts in Classical Education, Daryl M. Mance, cum laude. As the Dean, oh, I'm sorry. As the Dean of Wayland Baptist Theological Seminary, with the authority invested in me by the Board of Regents, on behalf of the faculty and in accordance with the laws of the state of Florida and the Commonwealth of Virginia, I hereby confer upon this candidate the Bachelor of Art in Classical Education with all of the rights, the honors, and privileges pertaining thereto. Will the candidate for graduation with the Bachelor of Arts in, in Interdisciplinary Studies please come forward? Reverend Dean, on behalf of the faculty, I am pleased to certify that this graduate of the undergraduate division has met the prerequisites and is now ready to graduate with the Bachelor of Arts Interdisciplinary Studies. Receiving the Bachelor of Arts in Interdisciplinary Studies, Albert Norwood Jarman II, cum laude. As the Dean of Wayland Baptist Theological Seminary, with the authority invested in me by the Board of Regents, on behalf of the faculty and in accordance with the laws of the state of Florida and the Commonwealth of Virginia, I hereby confer upon this candidate the Bachelor of Arts in Interdisciplinary Studies with all of the rights, the honors, and privileges pertaining thereto.
We will now, we will now hear softly as the alma mater plays in the background. The candidates will come forward. Though, well, you're now graduates after this commission. You all come forward. Do not bring anything in your hands. For those, we're going to listen to that playthrough. And I want you to familiarize yourself with the words. It is facing, is the page facing the portrait of Horace B. Whalen. Look at those words. Jesus said, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. The Markin writer said, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out demons. They shall speak with new languages. They shall challenge troublemakers and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover so I charge you go into all the world and preach the good news to every one regardless of their gender ethnicity, socioeconomic status, sexuality, political affiliation, or past experiences. Remember, Jesus said, other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. As a graduate of Wayland Baptist Theological Seminary, I charge you to do good in the Lord's name. Above all, do what the Lord requires of you, to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. As you serve in your various ministry settings, live out your faith as an unapolog unapologetically black person created in the image and likeness of God. Live out your faith as an uncompromising follower of the crucified and risen Jesus of Nazareth. Be guided and empowered by the Holy Spirit, making full proof and use of your ministry and the gifts and graces of God. Jesus said, all authority 
in heaven and on earth has been given to him. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to, ob to obey everything that he has commanded you. And remember, Jesus is with you always to the end of the age. Graduates, I say to you, as the Father has sent me, so send I you. As graduates of this historic institution, the Wayland Baptist Theological Seminary Incorporated, I authorize, commission, and charge you to go heal the sick, go raise the spiritually dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, expel demons. Freely you have received, freely give. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Ashe and Amen. Shall we stand as we are able? Turn to the alma mater in your worship folder and let us sing loudly and in key the alma mater. It's the only song you ever need to know in life. Go preach my gospel, save the Lord. Though some reproach and will bless. 
May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord guide you. May the sun shine brightly and warmly upon you. May you always remember that you are God's child, created for specific purposes. May your past be the sound of your feet upon the ground as you go in the name of our God. Ashe and Amen. Our benediction and recessional, which is found on page 31, our regents will prepare to process out our faculty and staff, the graduates behind them. Please turn to page 31 and I want you to sing loudly and in key. Yeah. 